Uh, my name is Dan Hirsch. I'm a lecturer in nuclear policy at UC Santa Cruz and president of the Committee to Bridge the Gap. Um, uh, to my right is Dr. Dodge. Um, first name? Robert. Dr. Robert Dodge, a physician, to explain to us the significance on a health basis of the radiation findings. Um, Marie Mason, Don Kowalski, Holly Hoff, residents who live nearby. Um, EPA tonight is releasing the results of a three year, $40 million study that has found extensive radioactive contamination remaining half a century after a partial nuclear meltdown and numerous other accidents at this site, and after the Boeing company has repeatedly uh, declared that the site had been fully cleaned up. They have found hundreds of locations in which there is elevated cesium and strontium, two very powerful radionuclides, at levels as high as a thousand times background. The findings provide a very powerful uh, indication of the necessity of rapidly complying with the cleanup agreements that the government uh, agencies entered into in 2010 to clean up all contamination that EPA could detect. We now know what it is, we know where it is, and the obstruction to the cleanup should now end Dr. Dodge. My name is Robert Dodge. I'm a family physician in Ventura, right here in this county. I'm working here this evening with Physicians for Social Responsibility from Los Angeles. As an organization, we at PSR have been working for over 20 years to clean up this site. Uh, again, we, we now recognize the severe contamination of this site and we're very concerned. These molecules in particular, cesium and, and strontium-90, the body takes these in and thinks they are life-giving molecules. Cesium-137 looks to the body to be uh, potassium. Potassium exists in every cell in our body and therefore is rapidly taken into every cell and can have effects for 10 to 30 years causing cancer rates. Strontium-90 looks like calcium. Calcium is taken up into our bones and to the teeth of our children, the deciduous baby teeth. PSR has a unique role with strontium-90. PSR in the early 1960s identified that the strontium-90 from nuclear blasts, uh, from nuclear testing, was in human baby teeth and was actually instrumental in obtaining finally the limited test ban treaty where nuclear testing was stopped from above ground. We know what's here, we're very concerned about it, it does present a human risk. The National Academy of Sciences has said there is no such thing as a safe level of radiation risk. We are concerned, as physicians, our role is to, to alarm and to alert the community. Again, our, our role also as physicians is to prevent what we cannot cure. We need to prevent the possibility of this. Again, we know where the contamination is, and our desire is that we see this remediated and back to background levels of radiation risk. Thank you. Marie? I'm Marie Mason. I live in the community directly below the site on the Simi side. We live in a very rural community. We all have creeks that run through our property, so we have water continually coming down off the site. And we'd like to see the site cleaned up the way that they, they signed the agreement that they would clean it up. It's been 23 years. It's been 23 long years, and we expect some movement now to clean it up. We know where the contamination is, and we want to see it. And Holly. Uh, my name is Holly Huff, and I live below the facility now have on the Ventura County side for 40 years. But I moved in on the other side of the hill on the LA County side over Lake Manor in 1959, the month before the meltdown. So I'm very interested in having it cleaned up and I've lived around it all my, most of my entire life. So. And uh, that's all. <laughs> Questions, if you have any. Or what do you find most significant in the contamination that's been found? Well, there are hundreds of uh, soil samples that came back contaminated with cesium-137. As Dr. Dodge indicates, it's a powerful gamma emitter, so it's kind of like getting an x-ray of your whole body for decades. Uh, and they had also a large number of strontium-90 hits. The some plutonium some other radionuclides, but the cesium and the strontium that dominate. And what I find most significant is that the site that is said to have been cleaned up uh, clearly hasn't been. The levels that have been found not only are very much above background, but they're also very much above EPA's uh, remediation goals uh, for unrestricted release. So I think there's this fundamental disconnect 
EPA has now found all this contamination, and yet Boeing and some uh, allies associated with Boeing have been trying to resist the cleanup. I hope that these findings will put an end to that. My name is Erica from the Japanese newspaper Asashi. Uh, um, uh, EPA says if uh, they will finish con the contamination by 2070, um, um, do you think it is possible? And so, from the results of the EPA investigation so far, uh, what do you think? Can, can you tell me more about the future health concern uh, for? Local food and water and local uh, The cleanup agreements require cleanup by 2017, and that's very doable now that EPA has identified where the contamination is. The problem is not scientific or technical, it's political, and frankly, it's the obstruction by Boeing and some people that are working with Boeing and some of these agencies to try to block the agreement they signed. So everyone in this community could breathe a sigh of relief a few years from now if that stuff's cleaned up. And that's the f fundamental message. We have a source of contamination, we know where it is, and the games are being played about not living up to the commitment just at the end. And you folks from Japan know this more than any of us. So um, this is doable. Um, EPA has given almost a, a, a map, in fact, has given a map, um, and all we now have to do is get the obstruction out of the way so people in the community no longer have to worry. And I would add that, again, the National Academy of Sciences said there was no safe level of radiation, okay? These elements, again, these have half-lives respectively of 29 and 30 years, okay? And so if you're just going to leave it to nature, half-lives in terms of when they reduce and come to safe levels takes 10 to 20 times a half-life. So that's 300 to 600 years it would take to make them come to a safe level. They need to be removed, they need to be remediated. Well, that's a very good point. The half-life works in both directions. The contamination that was found today was much higher uh, 50 years ago. And uh, there's nothing we can do. We can't go backwards. We can, however, prevent future harm. And that's the fundamental point here. Um, the government and the company that ran the facility was sloppy. That uh, environmental injury has to end. And it has to end by the government and this company beginning to take responsibility. Do you have any information about the health problem about the uh, former um, workers? Yes. The UCLA School of Public Health conducted a, a very extensive study that found that the workers with the highest exposures had substantially increased incidence of cancer of the lung, of the lymph system, and the blood systems. There is some evidence from an off-site study of some potential uh, risk associated with proximity to the site in the past. But because of the latency period, that could have all been happening from exposures that occurred long ago. The fundamental message remains, so stop this from happening ever again, and you do that by cleaning it. When you have levels that high, like a thousand times background, is that the kind of place uh, that uh, should be allowed to be uh, used for unrestricted uh, use? It has to be cleaned up. You don't want people put on it in any fashion unless it's cleaned up. And that's the fundamental issue. Uh, these companies violated, this, this company and the uh, agencies uh, broke fundamental environmental rules. They s spilled and released and contaminated. And now, in the 21st century, it's time to at least try to fix the mess that they created. I understand, too, that these elements can be, they can be ingested, they can be inhaled, and they can be absorbed through the skin. Were elevated levels of radiation in particular found around the uh, sodium reactor that had the accident in 1959? Yes, one of the intriguing things is that the data find much of the contamination in the places where much of the uh, accident history occurred. So the meltdown site had a fair amount of contamination, areas that had no history of activity and very little contamination, which is good news. We're not going to have to clean up or damage soil in areas where there wasn't much disturbance. But where there was already a disturbance, they already had you know, built buildings and then had accidents, we're going to have to clean that up. Hi, I'm from Tokyo. 
my name is Jen. Uh, how large level of engineering is in San Francisco? Chernobyl and Fukushima is level 7 or uh, 3 mile in this is nothing like Chernobyl. It's nothing like um, Fukushima. Um, the reactor was very much smaller. It had no containment structure, however. None of the reactors up there did. So no one should try to claim that there was a Fukushima or a Chernobyl here in Southern California. It's a smaller reactor. The other reactors were also small. It had a uh, hot lab that disassembled irradiated fuel. So it's a mess. But it's not the kind of tragedy you folks in Japan are having to deal with. I just had a clarifying question in terms of where the samples were taken. Was it just limited to the uh, Area 4, which was under the Department of Energy uh, ownership, or was it beyond that site? Okay. That the location? sample was in Area 4 and the Northern Buffer Zone. Okay. It was not merely in the Department of Energy uh, leased area of Area 4, but the entire Area 4. Area 4 was where all the nuclear activity occurred. So this radiation study did not cover areas one, two, or three of the southern buffer. It did not cover offsite areas. It tells you nothing about whether there is contamination offsite. Um, for the area, for the area that it was controlled by the DOE lease that was sampled, that's those are still under the rules in the consent orders. The agreement on consent covers all of Area Four and all of the northern buffer zone. Okay. So the agreement to clean up the background is for the very area that EPA has done the survey. That was okay. why the survey was done, so that EPA could hand that data back to the Department of Energy and say, you've got to clean this, 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 and this up. I have a question for the residents. Um, I know you mentioned that you can you tell me a little more about how this setback, obviously your message has always been you just want it cleaned up, but um, how does this setback make you feel? Well, I think every time you get a setback, it's depressing. You know? I mean, it's, it's just an endless journey. Well, it, it seems like we found it, clean it up, and let's move on. That's what we thought was going to happen when the agreements were signed. They all signed them up willingly, and now they have to uphold their end of the bargain. Their end of the bargain is EPA would look for it, EPA would find it. If they found it, it would get cleaned up. There should be no backpedaling on what we're going to do now. To me, it's cut and clear. So it's disappointing to get to this point and feel like we had victory, and really we're still fighting for a cleanup. I think that issue should have been decided. And the government just needs to stand up to what they did, and the Boeing company stepped back, they bought a contaminated site, that's the way it goes. Let's clean it up. And my view is that I, I thought it was going to be pretty simple. It was, we finally got the EPA, we worked for years to get the EPA, because we put a lot of trust in the EPA, and they were we were part of the background study and everything, so we knew it was pretty simple. We used them to come up with their numbers and soil up there would be tested. Anything over or questionable would be retested or cleaned up, and now it's it's not so simple anymore. They're changing the formulas, and it's last minute changes that we're really not even up on exactly either. It's going to be interesting to see what they say tonight. So the concern, is there a concern that they might not clean it up to the background that they said they would, this, that they signed the agreements to, to clean it up to? Uh, there was a famous journalist named I.F. Stone, who all of you journalists know, who famously said, all governments lie. And what our fear is, is that the governments are lied when they said to these residents that we will clean up what was found to be above background. And that's because of the power of the Boeing Company and its influence with these agencies. We've already seen the state toxics agency backpedaling from the agreements. We have seen some uh, troubling aspects in the last few weeks, even out of EPA. And, um, and NASA some months ago tried to break out of the cleanup agreement. 
So the price of uh, liberty is eternal vigilance. The only way these folks are going to ever have their health and safety protected is if um, the agencies and the company that's the responsible party live up to the obligation. These people didn't contaminate their neighborhood. They didn't feel as strongly and seizing around. They should be able to have their kids and grandkids live in peace without the fear that that's going to migrate off that hill. And if someone promises to clean it up, they ought to. Are the local residents the only people that have something to be concerned about? or what does, In which direction does Area 4 drain? Well, this is, I mean, you have two issues. When the wind blows, it carries resuspended contaminants in any direction the wind goes. And when it rains, you can have runoff that heads mainly towards Simi Valley, but it also goes into the aquifer. This is a fractured bedrock system very, very unpredictable flow for the ground. So you want it cleaned up. It's, 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 it's elementary. These are carcinogens. Carcinogens cause cancer. Uh, they found them. They need to remove them. As promised. As promised. And that's the headwaters for Los Angeles River. We have some data for you that you might find useful. Uh, we have plotted the cesium and strontium measurements against background and against the EPA's cleanup goals, so you can see um, how elevated much of this is. Yeah. And you're all welcome to sets of these. The press. And it will be around to answer questions, and in case you have any issues with what EPA ends up saying, uh, we're available. So thank you all for coming.